welcome back to the second episode of menstar complete guide so in the in the first episode we uh, we installed node js on our local machines and in this episode we we are going to explore how menstack works and what is the architecture of menstack how it works in development environment how we can build for production and also unit testing integration testing a uh, lot lot more so basically men stack contains four main uh, technologies one is mongodb document database express.js which is node.js web framework react.js which is a client side javascript framework node.js which is web server um so basically this is one of the popular choices um developers use to build full stack web applications so there are so there are other variations as well uh you can we can simply replace react with angular or vue.js so with these four key um technologies we can easily build multi three tier architecture so front end back end and database so front end is our react js and back end is our node js and express.js and the database is our mongodb so uh we we now we understand what are all the technologies that we need to build men stack let's see what it takes to build um to develop to develop the men stack on your local machine so first we need to install mongodb and when when we run we run our mongodb on our local machine it actually uses port 27017 um and also we need to install node js which we have seen in in our first episode so you can you you have to build your api and run this api on any port let's let's example let's say port 5, 5000 and then you need to build your react ui and also your react application is also running on port 3000 so now we have mongodb node js and react 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 application all three are running on different ports and we need to make sure these all these three communicate communicate with each other on these ports and also we will see how how we can we can make this communication happen in the in the, in the following episodes but but you need to make sure all these are running on your development mission and also these has to be communicated with each other now we know all these three things are running on different ports on your local host machine so so when it comes to development environment we need to build our back end and our front end separately and we should be running these separately as well because you need to make changes to both to both back end and front end at the same time uh, because you are still in development phase so that means so first we we will build node js api on port 5000 and this node js api will actually talks to mongodb and fetch the data or save data or change some data in the mongodb uh, document database and serve all the api calls through port 5000 so now now we are done with node js api and it is serving all the requests on port 5000 so now we were done with our api and um, when it comes to the react application um, your create react app uh builds and runs the application on port 3000 and you develop your all your user interfaces on port 3000 so when you run your react application you can actually see all the user interfaces on that particular port which is 3000 and also when it comes to fetching the data from the back end there is a mechanism called proxy so you have to define proxy url which is 5000 here local host 5000 you need to define that proxy url in package.json so whenever the whenever we need data from the back end react makes the api call whenever react makes the api call that api call will be forwarded to to the back end which is running on port 5000 so that way you can actually there is that, that way you can both front end and back end communicate with each other on your local host so to summarize your node js api you build your node js api on port 5000 you build your react api sorry react ui on port 3000 whenever web request comes 
you serve your react ui to the web on port 3000 and also whenever there is a need to make a api call uh, to the backend and fetch the data you have to proxy all the api calls to the node.js api which is running on port 5000 so now we have seen how development environment works uh, when it comes to the stack so sometimes you might not have all this uh, set up on your local machine still you, you want to run all these services together at the same time so that you can develop um, your your full stack application on your local machine so at the time docker compose is really useful when we do not have the development environment set up on our local machine so it is very useful to run all parts of the application to test uh, or we want to run all parts of application with one command. So with Docker Compose, you can kill all the services or you can restart all the services with single command. When it comes to Docker Compose, everything is defined in Docker Compose ML file. So everything is a service. So that means your database, Node.js API and your front-end application, everything is a service and all these services will be running on different ports and you can uh, we, we can define all these information in docker compose ml file so let's look at the docker compose ml file a little bit closely so you are here the front end app runs on port 3000 and also we can mention what are the networks it runs on and also it, we can mention what are the dependencies here here front end ui depends on the api so that's why uh, at line number 16 um, there's a dependency and let's let's go with let's look at node.js api so here we are we are looking at this is running on port 3080 and also there is a volume and also this also depends on db uh, you can you can notice that at line number 33 let's look at the database so here the database is running on 27017 and also we are mentioning the volumes and so here here we are not building an image if you notice line number 36 uh, there is a image mongo so we are directly pulling the mongo image from from docker hub um, and running running this mongo instance on port 27017 so you don't have to know all this right now because there is a complete, complete dedicated episode uh, for this. So all you need to know is your do when it comes to Docker Compose, everything is defined in Docker Compose ML file. And when you run, when you build and run this file, all these services will be running on your local machine as one unit on different ports. And you can, you can still edit and save as you save all those changes will be reflected on your browser so we know how to run our stack in both um, both on docker compose and on actual local machines so on development environment we need to run our node.js api and our front end on different ports but when it comes to building and running in production, you cannot run on different ports. So that means you have to run on a single port and you have to build the whole thing as a package and this whole package should be running on one port. So for that, so we have to make some changes. So the first change is you have to build your whole front-end front -end UI and 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 you have to take those assets and you need to put those assets in the public folder of node.js api so and when your node.js api running on port 5000 when the browser hits port 5000 your node.js api serve serve the index.html which is the which is the single page application of your front end ui and that from that when you load in when you load that index.html which is a single page all your front end uh, javascript will kick in and it will uh, it will display all the all the ui there 
and whenever you make an api call from uh, from the ui from the browser and your node.js will handle all those requests so that is how you build and package your stack uh, in production so you don't have to worry about right now so there is a completely dedicated episode for this and we will see step by step how we build and how we how we package um, uh, this whole thing so nowadays it's very common to dockerize our uh, application and deploy this docker image in one of the container orchestration platforms such as kubernetes and others so so when you build a docker image uh, we need to i mean it's it's a best practice to follow multi stage builds what is multi stage builds so you i mean you 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 need to build multiple stages and you take assets from each stage and put it put put those assets in a final stage so that so that you can reduce the unnecessary uh, code in the in the image and i mean you, you can you can eliminate a lot of libraries and dependencies um, in the docker image in the in the final docker image so for example if you look at this uh, in the first stage we are naming this as ui build so we are building the ui in the stage 2 we are building the api and we are naming this as api build in stage 3 what we are doing here is we are copying from the ui and we are copying from the api we are putting only the the output uh, the static assets and the bundled bundle file from the api and the static assets from the ui and we are only using those we are not using any dependencies we are not using any any code which is not related in the final in the final output so in the stage 3 uh, we are using only those and with those we are running the app with the with the last command so this will actually reduce lot of i mean lot of um, lot of dependencies so that means it reduces the image size when the image size is small uh, it is very easy to create the image or it, it is very easy to uh, create a container out of it and there are so many advantages we will get to know later but uh, but right now all you need to know is when with multi-stage builds, you can reduce surface attacks and you can reduce uh, image size. That means uh, faster startup uh, uh, when you deploy this image in the container. So finally, when you uh, when you create a container out of this image and this container runs on port 3000 and you can access your whole full stack web application on the browser on port 3000. Okay, we have seen main stuff so far, development environment setup, dockerization, and uh, Docker Compose, and what are all the technologies that is covered in this stack. So we have covered all those, but there is a lot more when it comes to developing a uh, full stack web application. So there is our MongoDB, and there is our uh, configuration of MongoDB in our API, externalize environment variables, building your UI interfaces and running all these setup on Docker Compose, unit, unit testing your API, unit testing UI, integration tests, and how you build your stack for production. So there is a lot more and don't worry, uh, we're going to cover each and every point here as a separate episode in detail. So stay, stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.